Welcome to the Lifestyle Medicine Update. I'm Dr. James Machino. Published on August the 1st, 2019, the UK Scientific Advisory Committee on Nutrition, along with Public Health England, released their updated comprehensive review on saturated fats and health. So the findings of the report were based on examining the results from 47 systematic reviews and meta-analysis. In this report, the advisory committee concluded the following. Number one, higher saturated fat consumption is linked to raised or elevated blood cholesterol. Number two, higher intakes of saturated fat are associated with increased risk of heart disease. Number three, saturated fats in the diet should be swapped with unsaturated fats. In other words, they should be replaced with unsaturated fats. And number four, there's no need to change the current advice that saturated fats should not exceed around 10% of food energy on any given day. Now, a chief spokesperson for the report went on to state that our report confirms that reducing saturated fat lowers blood cholesterol and cuts the risk of heart disease. Now, in today's world, much of the chatter about reducing heart disease risk entails warnings about reducing intake of trans fats, deep fried and breaded foods, and lowering consumption of refined sugar. This is all very valid and sound advice, but for some reason the discussion about saturated fat is often forgotten about, and this is problematic, and here's why. When you ingest saturated fat, it gets absorbed from the gut and much of it travels to the liver. The arrival of saturated fat in the liver turns on cholesterol production, which is, which is required to transport the saturated fat through the bloodstream, where it ultimately gets picked up and burned by muscles as a source of energy, or by fat cells which store the fat, and the fat cells get larger. So this process raises blood cholesterol levels beyond what is ideal for good health, and the excess cholesterol floating around in our bloodstream ultimately gets laid down its plaque in our arteries, and this causes progressive narrow, narrowing, which leads to blockage and resulting heart attack, ischemic, ischemic stroke, and contributes to other vascular problems such as what you see in diabetics, neuropathy, blindness, even gangrene with the need for amputation. So high saturated fat intake also makes your blood stickier, which increases the risk of abnormal blood clots, further increasing the risk of heart attack, stroke, and life-threatening deep vein thrombosis. Higher saturated fat intake also increases inflammation by activating receptors on certain immune cells and higher levels of inflammation in the artery wall also linked to an increased risk for heart attack. So regarding nutrition for those over the age of five years old, there's really nothing good to say about consuming saturated fat, yet most people consume too much of it. So what foods are the main culprits? Well, studies show that the major problems that we have in terms of consuming saturated fat are with the following foods. Number one, most cakes other than angel food cake. And remember that the frosting is especially rich uh, and loaded with saturated fat. Donuts and many other pastries like crullers and danishes and cream puffs and chocolate eclairs, even pie and pie crests, very high in saturated fat. Any product with milk chocolate, including a chocolate bar, lots of saturated fat there. Even some muffins that have more than two grams of fat would be considered very high. So check the label or the company's nutrition guide if you're gonna cheat with a little muffin once in a while. And many types of biscuits have a lot of saturated fat. Even pancakes, depending on how they're made, can have a lot of saturated fat. Same with French toast. And of course, beef and beef products, pork and pork products, lamb, very high in saturated fat, butter and lard, cream and ice cream, lots of saturated fat in those foods. Any milk or yogurt that's over 1% milk fat has a significant amount of saturated fat. Any cheese that's over 3% milk fat, that's almost every cheese in the world, is loaded with saturated fat. As well, tropical oils like palm oil and coconut oil, lots of saturated fat, those products will raise your cholesterol level. And same with shortening that's used in many products. Remember that chicken breasts are lower in saturated fat than chicken legs, and having skinless chicken breasts is really your best bet. And also some breakfast cereals can be very high in saturated fat, so read the labels carefully. Potato chips have a lot of saturated fat. Even some pre-packaged popcorn, and the popcorn that you buy at movie, theater, movie theaters, very high in saturated fat. So you can, you can buy you know, some uh, popcorns that are very low in fat or prepare them without fat. Popcorn's not necessarily bad 
but when you start adding butter and coconut oil and these other things, it can really take the saturated fat content uh, to uh, uh, an astronomical level. Anyway, you get the idea. Remember that the ideal total blood cholesterol to shoot for is below 3.9 millimoles per liter or 150 milligrams per deciliter with an LDL cholesterol, which is the bad cholesterol, at or below 1.5 millimoles per liter or 58 milligrams per deciliter. So if you haven't done it recently, get your blood cholesterol checked after a 12 hour fast and see how you stack up against these ideal values regarding your own heart disease risk. If your numbers are above these ideal values, then I would suggest that you work on further eliminating or reducing the foods I've reviewed here, which contain undesirable amounts of saturated fat. Your heart and your arteries will be in much better shape if you do. I've included the reference for this information in the text below, so thanks for watching, and I will see you next time.